train, storage, factories, shops, my create survival world is growing fast, but everything is powered by steam engines, and steam engines need fuel for the burners. So far, I've been using planks, but there is a powerful alternative, blaze cakes. When you feed a blaze burner with blaze cakes, its flames turn pale blue, and the steam engine it powers, so it goes nuts. So if we want to get the max efficiency out of our steam engines, we need blaze cakes, but getting blaze cakes, that's no simple task. Welcome to Create Survival Episode 7, let's make a blaze cake factory. I'm gonna have to kill the bank. Yeah, I started building this in, I think it was episode three, and it was supposed to be an XP storage place where people could store their XP instead of having it on themselves. Inside of you? I, I, I don't But then the idea of this bank started to grow. It's going to be massive, huge, and absolutely insane. And this building, it does not cut it. So sometime in the future, I will finish this place, but it won't be here, and it won't look like this. There we go, that's almost everything. But don't worry, I'm gonna build a better bank, a cooler bank, a cooler... Way. It's, just, it's, just, it's just an insane idea that's gonna take an entire episode to make. And it's gonna be way better than whatever this is. So now that I don't have a bank here, what am I gonna do with this plot of land? Well, how about uh, this? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I designed this building in the same vibe as this one right here. This is my builder's factory And if you didn't watch my previous episode, and why? Why are you watching this one? But you need to watch the other episodes first But yeah, I like the style of this build, so I made another one It's a bit different, but it's the same thing with the girders and stuff But this building is going to be the blaze cake factory I hate getting rid of the schematics, because then I realized that I haven't built it yet It's so easy to fool yourself You pick one of these up and you're like, yeah, the, the building's done Let's let's go make the factory <laughs> So I guess that's going to be step one for the blaze cake factory Actually making the blaze cake factory building But I'm going to need a lot of materials to do that. What do we need? 550 andesite pillars. Yippee. But that's actually, you know what? Eight stacks of andesite pillars. That would have been a pain to get in episode two or three, but not now, baby, because I made the builders factories. We can just go into here and see that, well, I already have 1,200 andesite generated. I will never have to worry about andesite or granite ever again. And then we have three pages of stuff. It's just basic stone buttons, everything, viridium. I can get this. And I did. I've put everything I need to build this in these barrels, and I'm going to let this schematic cannon just uh, do the building for me. So we'll just uh, take a step back and relax. <laughs> I usually don't do this, but I'm so close to 500,000 subscribers, so if you're enjoying this series so far, and you're watching the episodes, and you're having a good time, please do subscribe, it makes me very happy, it's a useless number, but it fills me with joy. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Alright, the outside is finished, and that means it's time to build the inside. But before I do that, I'm gonna have to explain to you just how we're going to fully automate the creation of blaze cakes. So the thing is, to make blaze cakes, you need netherrack. And as far as I know, there is no way to generate netherrack with create. If you're planning on making a blaze cake factory, you're gonna have to go out and and mine all the netherrack on your own with your hand and I mean that's not very creative is it? No actually I find it stupid that there is no way to get netherrack especially when bulk hunting exists and so what I thought was that if you bulk hunt cobblestone for example you'd get netherrack and it kind of makes sense right so what if you get cobblestone and bulk haunt it? Oh there it is bulk haunting what happens if we haunt cobblestone should that not then turn into netherrack? No no it turns into blackstone which I, I get it but like but then I started to think about it and I mean I guess it makes sense. Blaze cakes are very overpowered and getting cobblestone is so easy with the cobblestone generator. So we'd be able to make a bunch of blaze cakes out of nothing. Just water, lava, a flame, eggs, and sugar cane. That would be very easy to do. And so I literally made my own way. Because I want this to be fully automatic. I'm not gonna go to the nether and dig. There's no way. So I thought, okay, what block is sort of hard to get? Not impossible, but, you know, harder to get than cobblestone. And, and then I landed on andesite. To make andesite, you need lava, gravel, and flint. It's relatively easy, but, you know, it takes a while to set up the factory. So my first data pack ever for Minecraft makes bulk hunting for andesite turn into netherrack. Yes! So here is a fan. It's blowing through soul fire, and then we just get a block of andesite, put it here, and as you can see, it is given off the haunted particles, and it's going to result in a netherrack. Oh. It's easy, but it's not that hard, and I don't care if you think it's overpowered, because I'm playing the game and not you. Shut up. <laughs> and now that you know how it works, you also know what we need. We already have our andesite generator in this building over here, so we need to connect it up. Uh, we need to connect it up into here. We need yet another lava farm, a sugarcane farm for sugar, a chicken farm for eggs, and then of course crushing wheels that turn our netherrack into cinder flour, and that's all that we need to make the blaze cake base. We fill it with lava and blaze cake. Blaze, 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 blaze. All right, so I've done some prepping. This mechanical bed right here goes all the way over to... All the way... To these chutes that lead into the andesite vault with 4,000 andesite. Whoa! So the andesite blocks will come out here onto this mechanical belt. 
and then get transported all the way over to our factory. <laughs> and the first thing we want to happen is obviously the bulk haunting, so that's gonna take place right here. So I believe we want a mechanical belt right here, I'm pretty sure, and then one andesite tunnel on each side of the belt. Right here we'll place five soul sand and light it up. So all we need now is some encased fans behind the flames, and we've finished the haunting portion of the factory. Yeah, this looks kind of strange, so I thought we could get some andesite casings down here, maybe spruce supports and glass. I want it to look like a furnace, and I think, yeah, that looks pretty neat. Actually, we can get some support up here as well, make sure they're flat, and then, ah, oh, this is gonna be expensive, we'll get some andesite casings here. There we go, that looks a bit better at least. So see, right now the smoke of the furnace goes straight out into the factory, that is a big no-no, we can't just fill this room with smoke, right? So I'm gonna make a chimney, but before I do that, I wanna make sure that everything is connected here. First off, I want a rotation speed controller here, so I can actually control the speed at which this mechanical belt is moving. I need to jump down and place it while falling. Oh, there's a creeper. No, I failed. Ah! Well, attempt number two. Let's see if we can place it this time. No, okay, let's just... There we go. And well, there we go. That is the upper floor of the Blaze Cake Factory finished, and I made the chimney, as I said. Look at that. Yes, if we walk outside, you can see it, it smokes. Yeah! And while all of this seems great, which it also is, it's not finished. So this is where the Blaze Cakes are created. We make the base for it right here, and then it gets filled with lava right here with the little spout. And then this vault is just for uh, storing it. Basically, to make the Blaze Cake base, you need cinder flour, sugar, and eggs. This thing right here gives us cinder flour, but we still need sugar and eggs. So my plan is to make that in the basement of this little factory right here. Oh, not again. So I'm gonna have to make a sugarcane farm probably somewhere over here and then a chicken farm as well for getting the eggs. Let's see, sugarcane needs water to grow, right? So for this farm, we'll place one layer of dirt, one layer of water, one layer of dirt, one layer of water. Yeah, this should work, I think. And then we'll get our windmill bearing in the center, three radial chassis, harvesters, barrels, sails, all of it. And there we go. This should now be a functional sugarcane farm. I am pretty sure I've glued everything together here. Let's right click, turn this thing on and see if it works in three, two, one, please. That's the wrong way. Okay, wait. Uh, turn around. There we go. It is moving, I think. Yeah, that looks great. So now we just have to wait for some growth. And hopefully it harvests everything the way I want it to. I don't know if it's going to be able to harvest all of these sugar canes. But hopefully most of them. Oh, oh is it? Oh. 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 Well, it is harvesting the sugar... Okay, maybe not that one. But the... Uh, okay. <laughs> It's harvesting the sugarcane and hopefully it'll drop it off once it goes around here. I'll place a chute on here so we actually see if it goes out or not. And actually, let's get a mechanical belt here. Okay, here we go. The portable storage interfaces will kiss. And there it is. 13 sugarcane on the belt, ready to be turned into sugar and then transported up this belt where we'll use it for the blaze cakes. But of course, before it goes upstairs, we need to turn it into sugar. And that happens right here with a mechanical crafter with an andesite funnel going into it. That should craft it into sugar uh, with some cogwheels here and maybe a gearbox like that should be able to transform the power up here and then we just need a way to put it onto this belt hmm okay so i think we could use a chute here if we just place one right here and then we connect it like that and then we get a funnel going into this with an encased fan underneath pointing upwards but then we also need to uh, I think I'm overcomplicating this, but this should be the correct rotation for the, for the encased fan. Very expensive way of transporting some sugar a couple blocks up. I could have also just made this belt go further down and then connect it up, but I need this space for the chicken farm, so this will have to do. <laughs> but all right, how about we power this and see if we get any sugar up to the top floor? All right, so I've connected up our power system right here, and it is one shaft away from powering the Blaze Cake Factory. This should make everything move, and also, yeah, it should, it should start making our sugar. So let's see, three, two, one, boom. Boom. Things, they are moving. That one's moving with full speed. That is correct. But we're not getting any rotation down here. Oh, wait. We need a shaft on that one. Is that... Oh, oh there we go. Yep. It is moving the wrong way. Which might be because everything is moving the wrong way up here. I think this rotation speed controller right here needs a change of uh, direction. Where is it? All right. Change it to the other way around. Let's do the same thing for this one, which controls the belt that goes into the furnace. And as you can see, everything is now moving the correct way. This is moving into the craft and the air is going up here. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put the sugar cane onto the belt and there we go. Ha! We're getting sugar. That's it. That's all we needed for it. Is it showing up? Oh, yes, it is. Here is the sugar. For some reason, it's not rotating here, though. A shaft in there might fix. Yep. Oh, it's going straight through. I didn't. Oh, no, I didn't filter this. And actually, why are we not seeing any andesite over here? It should be transporting, right? Oh, yeah. Nope, it is. It is transporting. But this thing in here is not moving, though. All right. I think I can fix that. Two encased chain drives coming up. Boom, bam, bop. And yeah, there it is. All right. Let's see. The netherrack machine. 
seen. We've got our andesite coming in. It's being haunted. And it did not- oh no, it did not work. Are the fans going the wrong way? Wait, are we not even powering the fans? I'm not even powering the fans! Stop! <laughs> We're wasting andesite. Wait, wait, let me- ah! oh! Shaft! Boom, boom. Does that work? Is it- Yes! It's haunting! All right, we're still we're still getting a lot of andesite out here. That's not supposed to be here. Can I get rid of it? <gasps> the netherrack! The andesite is getting haunted into netherrack. The netherrack then goes into these crushing wheels. And now we have apparently 16 cobblestone. That's We're not supposed to have cobblestone. There we go. 16 cinder flowers, 16 sugar, eggs. All we need is eggs and lava, of course. But we, we've got a bunch of lava. That's where, I mean, we don't have to worry about this. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'll just add some pipes over to one of my two lava farms. And we're good. What does worry me a bit, though, is the egg farm. Because as far as I know, I ain't got no chickens. And we need chickens. A lot of them, actually, because we need a bunch of eggs. And <laughs> I don't know, man. Transporting animals is a pain in this game. I am not excited to do this. All right, I have now removed my staircase I made here and added a ladder instead that leads us down to this amazing chicken home. Check this out. Wow, these chickens are going to be so happy and live their greatest life in this amazing stone box. Just a dimly lit stone box. But don't worry, I'll play them some music. They'll be fine, <laughs> you know, it's okay. It's, we're not breaking any laws here. Ah! So underneath the grass here, there runs a railroad or a minecart track, really. So on here, I'm gonna have a hopper minecart going around, picking up all of the eggs, dropping it off into these chutes, and then put it up into the thing, the blaze cake thing, you know. So all that's left to do is now the dreaded task of getting chickens. I've collected some wheat seeds from my chests. I've crafted some leads with all the slime I had. And now it's time to head off into the unknown and pick up some animals. Most of my factory have been non-animal torture certified. Yeah, this one's not gonna be. Finding chickens, and I'm not finding any. This is Whisper's old base. Hello, where is the chickens? Is it because we've built here? Do they not spawn when there's like, when it's like built on the land? What? There are no animals here. What is going on? Have I destroyed nature so much that animals have just disappeared? What? I mean, it wouldn't even surprise me. What the fu- fu What the fu- oh! No, there- I am actually- Okay, chick- Wow, okay, I found chickens. That's neat. Uh, but screw the chickens. What is this? Who has made the temple of death? What? Okay, this could be- I'm guessing this is Whisper, right? This was- uh, I mean, we've all seen his base over there. He made this in like the first couple of weeks of the server. Uh, and I know he's been talking about making a new base somewhere else because this one is kind of obnoxious and just in the middle of the town. But whoa, I had no idea. I mean, I I'm just assuming it. It's him, right? This is crazy. We've got an elevator here. Oh, and there's a oh, basement as well. Oh, look at that. All right, wait, I want to check out the basement, but first, let's go to the top floor. Why? This is insane. I was just out looking for chickens. I did not expect the Tower of Doom. Oh, and he's got a chicken as well. <laughs> Looks like I found the Tower of Impending Doom and a chicken. Oh, here we go. That is this this is, this is making me dizzy. Bro made a Minecraft minigame server hub in survival. What is this? It looks like I'm about to go play Sky Wars if I go through here. <laughs> All right, well, that's crazy. I mean, I, I, I think it's Whisper. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to talk to him about it. A 10 out of 10 base so far. A lot better than this one. All right, chicken, you're coming with me. Oh, look at their cute little feet. They're running so fast. Can I get them through this door? Yeah, there we go. Welcome. This is, yeah, don't mind the fire or the, the, the haunting. It's a uh, all good. Just come. Oh, no. Coming down. No, it's falling. No. Well, I mean, uh, this is. All right, wait. I'll go down and then get down here, please. Yeah, there we go. Welcome to. Oh, no. Welcome to your new home. How does it feel? Yeah, looking nice, ma'am. I hate this. Come on, please. Oh yeah, you want that, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you want to see it? Boom. Easy peasy. Yes, and we have a baby. While walking, I collected four eggs, so I'm gonna place that into the system, because right now, obviously, there's not a lot of chickens here, so they're not producing as many eggs as we need. I also have not placed down the minecart yet that is gonna pick up everything, but I'll do that later. For now, I just wanna test this out by dropping these four eggs onto the conveyor belt and just seeing the blaze cake bases get created. So right now, we have a spruce star in here. That's okay, it's time! I've got the lava pumping over here, the spout is filled with it, and now we can just switch out this filter here for blaze cake bases, and they should go out and get filled. That's it. There we go. Four blaze cakes in the vault. Oh, that is so nice. Obviously, the eggs are a problem right now because we don't have any. But I'm just going to keep on breeding the chickens until we have a billion of them. Who cares about lag? All I want is the blaze cakes. Mm. And this factory is actually going to be essential for the future of this series. Blaze cakes are great to have. And they're so powerful for steam engines. And I've also prepped a little back door over here right there. So if I want to, I could connect up a transport system for getting the blaze cakes out of here and, you know, somewhere else. So I'm thinking about adding trucks that drive around on the street or, you know, just cars 
in general, maybe postal cars so you can send things to different addresses. That would be something really cool. And then also trucks for picking up things from the different factories and dropping them off at other places. You know, there's a lot you can do. And I've already done some experimenting with, you know, vehicles with Create. Obviously, you use trains, but you make it look like they're cars. And it's just it's just all really cool. And I want to do it on the survival world because I mean, how cool wouldn't it be if we had cars driving around transporting items? I mean, all of this is actually doable. I mean, it would be hard to do, but it is possible. But that's for a future episode. I have something to admit. When making this factory, I made it sound like I had all the resources and oh, it was so easy to get everything I needed, but that's not true. See, to build this, I had to make some radical changes to the builder's factory. Oh yeah, we're, uh, we're going back in time now. I'm gonna be honest, building the Blaze Cake Factory is gonna be a bit harder than I make it out to be, because I do not have the materials. I mean, most of the times when I'm building something in this world, I have to grind for hours because I don't have the correct machines set up, the correct factories made. And so since I have the Builder's Factory here that already is producing andesite and granite, I thought I'd upgrade this with a little elevator. So here's the factory floor, right? And over here we have the storage, and this was supposed to be the control room, but if we walk through here, it's it's just an empty room. I can't even see anything out the window because the couple's so just- So what if we just remove the control room sign and then turn this into an elevator that goes down into a basement where we can produce even more stuff. And I've actually already let a schematic cannon dig out an area for me down here. So if we dig down, I probably shouldn't be doing this because we might just fall. It's actually pretty big. I need a lot of space for the machine. Yeah, okay. Well, I did. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Oh, whoa. How do you have that much HP? You are tiny. Go where? No! Alright, anyways, this is where I'll build it. I need to go get all of the materials. I want- I want out, please. I need to get all the materials! Okay, so we once again need iron for this build, and I have ran out completely, so it's time to take the little cargo train over to Albin's base, and once again, slightly illegally purchase his iron. He hasn't been online for weeks at this point, so I don't think he'll care, but you know, you never know. One day he might just join and sue me. This is not correct. What? No idea what happened there, but it seems to be working. Yeah, and here's my previous payment. Nice, thank you for some more. And now we just wait until I get all the iron in the world so I don't have to worry about it ever again. Thank you so much, Albi. <laughs> all right, I may or may not have hundreds of stacks of iron in the backpack in my inventory. We don't talk about this. I gave him all my diamonds, okay, don't worry. But you know, the thing is, I could just make a very efficient iron farm. I could do that. It's, it's not hard, but you know, I want some sort of server economy. It's fun when you can go somewhere and purchase something from someone else so they have a reason for making that. So Albin made this iron farm, right? And that's one reason, obviously, he wants iron. But also, now he can sell it to me, because I don't have any iron. And that's cool. I think that's fun. But uh, since he's not here to sell it, I'm just going to keep stealing it and paying him for it, because that, that makes no sense. Anyways, we have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of iron in this backpack. Uh, 4,000! <laughs> and with that, I can craft most of the iron-related items, especially the item vaults. They are very expensive, and I should actually make a separate iron vault factory now that I think of it, because uh, crafting them is a pain. We need barrels and iron sheets. Two iron sheets per vault, and we need 162 iron vaults, so that means we need 324 iron sheets, I think. And that would be around five stacks of iron, so let's just one, two, three, four, five, and make it six, because I'm not sure. All right, let's see. Oh no. Let's get this iron sheet and filter it on the brass funnel. Turn that around. And now we should just be able to drop a stack here and it's going to drop. Yeah. But no time wasted. As this was pressing the iron, I went into all my alt accounts and subscribed to Shell so you can reach 500,000 subscribers right now. Right now. Do it. I did it. You oh, there we go. It's done. Thank you very much. So now we just need 162 barrels, which might sound like a lot, but it really isn't. Since I have the tree farm, we can just run over here, get all we need, craft the barrels, go ahead. Very, very simple. The distance between my base and my tree farm, though, is, is kind of a problem. My base is over there and the tree farm is here. I need to figure out a way to like split half of the logs from here and send them over to my base because going back and forth all the time is kind of a pain. I also just haven't finished this build either. Everything I've made on the server is half finished. I'm gonna have to make an episode that is just finishing everything that I've started because it's a lot now. Oh, would you look at that? Swap! Whoa! Getting the rest of the items was actually kind of painful, but I have hopefully everything I need right now in this little backpack And we'll start with removing these doors and this sign or not I can't pick that up with the wrench key to make the elevator and I think this is actually gonna be my first elevator Right if I'm not mistaken I helped Safdis make one and I don't think I've made one myself You know what maybe I have and I don't remember but <laughs> I don't think I have So I'm gonna build this with a polished andesite floor and then I'll use copycat panels to make the walls Around the elevator I think on the block right here 
You know, the panels are kind of strange, because if I want them down here, I'll click here and then they'll be on the wall. And then if I try to get them on the wall and it's on, I want them to work like trapdoors, but they don't. And it bothers me so much. But I might be able to put it on here and then expand it to the side. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll build these up to the ceiling. There we go. I actually, no, we want doors over here. I forgot. Oh, we have a problem. If our elevator is going to be this size and I place the doors on here like this and then like this, we will have nowhere to put the contraption controls. So you can see there is no block in here that we can place this on. Okay, you know what? We could have the doors up here just be on this level. So they'll be right here. That means we can have the contraption controlled right here. And then these doors will just not move with the elevator at all. And then we'll have it automatically open when the elevator arrives instead. Maybe that might work. But for now, it's time to fill in these copycat panels with our andesite casings and brass casing, I think, for the ceiling. I don't know. It's a very small elevator, but I don't know. I, I, I think this will work fine. Anyways, let's make sure we glue everything together here. And then I get rid of this block so it doesn't move with the elevator. And that should be it. The entire elevator is now glued together. Yes. And of course, we have the redstone contact that is moving with the elevator. So we'll have another redstone contact here. And then the elevator probably maybe right here, here, I think would be good. Right. Let's get this elevator some power and see if it works or not. Let's assemble the elevator. That works. Yes, we have an elevator contact. And that should mean there's a level zero. Yeah, I went down and placed out the redstone contact. So that should work. And we just need to make sure that the elevator can actually get down there because right now it can't. There it is. There's blocks in the way. All right. There is the redstone contact. That is now an elevator contact. And if we hop in here and close up the doors, should be able to go down. Yeah. That was pretty fast, but it looks kind of strange because we just lose the door uh, up here. Okay, so the elevator is not perfectly working yet, but it is working and we can make our way down and start building the factories. Actually, I'm going to go get some torches because I really need to light that place up. It is filled with monsters and I don't want to do another building session where zombies attack me every 10 seconds. I've had a horrible time making my base so far because it is completely dark down there. So this time we're getting torches. Torches acquired and torches being placed. All right, everything is now lit up. Let's go ahead and start building the basement expansion for the builder's factory. go the lobby of the basement in here you can see everything that i will automate down here in this basement for now it is water lava bricks i forgot what that's called i think that's a cast iron ingot metal girders and a site alloy dried kelp and mechanical belts and this might seem like a weird mix of items but it is some of my most used things ever of course lava and water you always need it bricks i build a lot with bricks and metal girders so that kind of you know makes sense it'll just make it a lot easier for me to build the base cake factory and while this might look all uh, good and cool and nice sad enough there is nothing behind these vaults. I have not made any of the machines yet. This is just the final storage that everything will end up in once it's finished. And I think I'm going to start with these two vaults right here. These are the dried kelp and mechanical belt vaults, which means we're making a kelp farm. And I'm not sure how to do that, but I'm just going to guess and try. And maybe I can make something that works. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be the location of the kelp farm. I'm trying to fill it up with water. It's taking a while. Been at this for like 10 minutes at this point. I just can't seem to figure it out. I think I've used a hose before to like spray water or pump water, I guess, into a large area, which is a fun way of doing it with Create. But this time, for some reason, I just decided to do it manually and I don't understand Minecraft water. Okay, so crazy idea. I'm just going to fill everything up with planks here and I hope that just makes it work. If not, then I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I, I don't understand. How do I understand most aspects of Create but not Minecraft water? I don't know, but that... No, oh, look my pay, but it looks like I do understand it. That worked. No! Why did it take me half an hour to fill up a pool of water? I started with the kelp farm because it was supposed to be the same thing to make. Now I'm starting to think my iron farm and andesite alloy metal girder combined farm is going to be a lot easier to make than this because I, sp I, what? I spent half the day just filling this with water. So my plan is to put a minecart contraption on the glass here that is then connected to mechanical harvesters that pick up all of the kelp, hopefully. I recently recorded a video where I used a minecart contraption on a boat to make a kelp farm, but that didn't really work because it dropped all the kelp that it didn't touch. And I have no idea if it's going to work here or not, but I have some rail here and I just realized I was supposed to build the minecart contraption before I fill this up with water because now I can't build it because it's filled with water and kelp. Time for a plan B then, I guess. I got some normal rail now and I'm going to build out here and then build it on this side and then hopefully make it go into here and then remove the rail. Bro, I can't explain anything today. Card assembler, minecart, and then a bunch of linear chassis, I believe. And I'm not building anything fancy here. I want this to be hidden behind these walls. No one gets to see this farm either way. So I'm just going to do the forbidden and super glue a bunch of blocks onto here. Okay, let's turn this on and push it away. And we place a block here, I think. 
and then it got stuck. Okay, I think it needs it to be a powered rail, but we can do that. Yeah, there we go. It's harvesting. It's harvesting time, baby. Now I forgot about the inventories. <laughs> How do I keep making this mistake over and over? And I keep forgetting that I need to put storage on the contraptions so they store the items. One, two, three, four barrels. I'll just borrow a shoot from one of the other farms and see. Or are we getting something? Oh yeah, that's some kelp. Yeah, nice. Kelp farm, baby. But of course, you know me. That's just step one. We can't just make it pick up kelp. No, no, no. We need this to automatically turn into dried kelp and mechanical belts. Two very important items in Create. So let's test this thing out, shall we? I've connected a rotation speed controller to everything here. I, I think this should all work. We just need to get this shaft up into here because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. I knew it. This is from the stone slab transportation belt from the train factory. I'm gonna yoink, steal that. Thank you. They are uh, moving the wrong way. <laughs> let's change that real quick. There we go. Yes. Oh, yeah. I forgot the filters. This is not going the way I wanted it to go. I need the fans in the other direction. Ah, there it is. Yeah, wait, I just forgot to power this. Uh, I think that should do it. Yeah, there we go. Boom. The kelp farm is active. We're farming kelp over here, dropping it down here where it gets smoked and turned into dried kelp, restoring half of the dried kelp in here, and half of it goes into making mechanical belts. And now I'll never run out of mechanical belts again, or dried kelp for that matter. Look at that. Already 32 dried kelp ready to go. I want to make funnels or tunnels or whatever I need. I'll just go over to the village factory and pick up some of that dried kelp. Mm. Yeah, with all of that done, I'll pick up my backpack and seal this part of the factory off, and then and it's time for the big boys. So we have two machines left to build, this one that produces brick and the most complicated one, the andesite alloy, metal girder and cast iron ingot machine. Whew, and there we go, that is most of the farm done. We just need to get the andesite down here and everything should be ready to go. You can now call me the Andesite King. And not only the Andesite King, oh no, no, no. You can call me the Cast Iron Ingot King, the Metal Girder King, the King of Everything, including water and lava, which I've set up farms for as well. 720,000 millibuckets of lava. Actually, double that because I have two fluid tanks. One is behind this one that you can't even see. Yeah, it was a horrible pain to construct all of this, but now I've got it. Uh, we have infinite water, infinite lava, already 38 cast iron ingots, 48 metal girders, 2,000 andesite alloy, which is nuts. And these numbers are only going to grow, except for one of the vaults, the bricks, because I haven't set up the brick farm yet. But I have to do it because we need a lot of bricks for the blaze cake factory. Uh, there's barely any space for it back here because I've, yeah, I've had to set up a tree farm and everything to feed blazes, and it's, yeah, it's very crowded out here. So I might have to dig out some more space for it, but honestly, I've shown you enough of this build, so I'm just gonna snap my fingers, and when I do, the brick farm is just going to magically work out of nowhere. Just to... okay, it was not that fast for me, it took a bit longer to make, but here we go. We have some bricks, not a lot, but we do have some bricks in this vault, which is very nice, very, very nice. It's a very slow farm, so I'd have to AFK here for a while, but actually, I have some other things I need to get a lot of crate mode components, rotation speed controllers, brass things for the blaze cake factory. So I'll go and do that while the brick farm is over here, just getting me bricks without me having to do anything. This is so nice, I love this mod, and there we go. That is how I got everything I needed to build this factory. We're back to now time, just so you know. Uh, but to I don't know, man. Time travel. We might just end up creating a paradox on the Shout Survival Create server. I don't know. <laughs> but there you go. The items didn't just magically appear. I spent a lot of time getting it. Now we have to go back to a project that is very important to me. The Central Train Station over here in Albin's old base. So a couple episodes ago, I constructed the Central Train Station and a train on that station underneath Albin's old base here, because I want this to be the entrance to the train station of our town. It's just a great location for it. Very central, and you can reach it from everywhere. Very perfect. But the problem is that this is still Albin's old base, right? I haven't really removed anything. It just looks exactly like it did when he left. So right now, to get to the train station, you have to go into this base, jump out of a hole in the wall into this lake that exists underneath our town. <laughs> and there's my base, by the way. And then you swim down here. Let's see if I can find it. It's actually been a while since I was here. I believe it is. Oh, yeah, there it is. We have a staircase that leads us into the train. Why is it lime green? Oh, there we go. This is the central train station with the first train of the server standing right here. Look at this beauty. Mm, but if we go in to drive it, uh, we can't really get anywhere because the tracks, they just they just end here. I haven't made anything other than this. And I really want to start working on a mining town. And for that, I'm going to need the trains to be able to go back and forth from this town to the mining town. Blah, blah, blah. You get it. Basically, I need to finish this place and then make it so the trains can actually go somewhere because right now we're stuck underground. I need to slope the train tracks all the way up to surface level where the actual railroads will be. And I believe step one is going to be making an entrance for this place because right now it's kind of a pain getting down here 
here. You can't, I mean, it, this this does not work. <laughs> Imagine you're commuting every morning and to get to the train station, you have to swim through a cave. That is, you know, not the best way. I can't even find my way in. Where did I come from? So let's start removing the walls and transform Albin's old base into the central train station entrance. Look at that, this is very empty and feels strange and weird. Oh. Okay, so first off, we're gonna have to expand the road here so it actually goes into the train station entrance. I think this is the width we want. Let's dig everything up, place down the sidewalk, place down the road, and there we go. The street is now connected to the train station entrance. But this really bothers me. The metal girder goes straight down into the road. We can't have that, that, no, no, no. But I don't have any girders on me, so I can't fix it. But wouldn't it be great if I made a metal girder factory generator? Oh wait, I did, because I use them all the time and I'm so Heart. Oh, that one. thank you, thank you. Now, hey, hey, hello. And now we can get rid of these. Oh, let's see. Look at that. That looks great. Whoa. Let's make it two rows. Why not? Boom. I think that looks a lot better than having it into the street. But all right, entrance time. So my plan is to have gates, and you have to pay one diamond to pass through the gates. So I make some money off of this as well. And then one staircase and one elevator that both go down to the tracks. And that sounds like a simple plan, but I'm actually not sure how I'm going to make the entrance system because I want it to detect when you give a diamond and then open up the gates. Or, well, I guess we could just use a smart observer for that. Yeah, you know what? I'll figure it out. But first off, let's make the room itself where the gates are in, and we'll save the redstone for later. All right, here's the plan. Four mechanical bearings in the floor with uh, with radial chassis on top like this, connected to black stained glass panes on the side. Let's get some spruce logs here so it actually connects up to the walls. And then glue on the sides of the radial chassis. We shorten the radius to one on all of them. And then inside this little booth here, we'll have a villager. And when you drop a diamond into here, the gates will open up and you can walk through into the central train station. So this will be an elevator that goes down to the tracks, as you can see. And then this will be a case for whenever the elevator is just not working. So let's make this work, shall we? I have a smart shoot here and I'll place it right here on the floor and then we'll filter, let's see, no, we'll filter a diamond on the side. So now if you drop, for example, a red seed onto the chute, it does not go down. But if I drop the diamond, whoop, there you go, it falls through. Sorting is so easy with Create. I mean, this is just, it's it's a luxury. Okay, so the diamond comes through this chute, right? And then we want it to drop onto a depot. And after that, it goes into these chests just for storage, I guess. Now, when it is on this depot here, we want to take a redstone signal out of it. So we'll get a smart observer facing into the depot with a filter of a diamond and also a redstone link so we can send this signal wirelessly. Now, whenever a diamond goes through the chute, we'll get a signal from this redstone link that goes into a sequence gear shift that will control our mechanical bearings. This is going to be great. All right, I actually think that is everything. Uh, we just need to get some rotation into here, and I don't think I have any nearby. I guess I do have the cow farm, and that, yeah, that is rotating. I'm not sure if we have enough stress coming out of this thing, but if I'm not mistaken, it is a vertical gearbox here, so we should just be able to, oh yeah, there we go, steal this right here. All right, let's test it with a button and see if it works. What? All right, let's see if everything's spinning in the correct direction, because that is actually something I do not know, because I didn't get to see it move. Let's put the diamond... It is? That is perfect. Did you see that? Doors opened up, doors closed. Ha! That's exactly what we want. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I figured most of this out now. We've got some light gray concrete walls, a gray concrete ceiling. Elevators looking kind of horrible, but it should work. And that's the important part. Entrance floor. There we go. Welcome to the elevator. Let's go to floor zero. Oh, my, I'm taking damage. What? We're going down. There we go. And then in here, we're going to have a corridor that leads into the train tracks. It's actually this way. I can dig and show you. We should get perfectly onto the train tracks, hopefully. Because that's been the plan all along. And if we don't, oh yeah. <laughs> We don't need you anymore, water staircase, because we can just go straight through here. I'll make a nice little hallway. We hop on the elevator and boom, we're going up. That is so nice and the door's open and we can leave. For now, this was the most important part. So I have to go around and make this look a bit better now. I uh, fixed the elevator shaft so there are no holds, because if, like, if we go down here, you can see that. Oh, wow, there's a room. And then I have to make the corridor down there, make this room look a bit better, finish this up, get a villager in here. That's important. We need a villager in here. And as soon as all of that's done, it's actually time to expand our railways and actually make some trains that goes to another town and my mining town. And I'm so excited for the next episode. Trains, railroads, mines. It's gonna be sick and I hope you're here to watch it. Bye-bye.